So now we are going to solve the binary bomb only using anger. The binary bomb should be already known for everybody that is doing the reverse engineering path. It's a very well known challenge. So we are going to start as every time. Uh, we are going to first load LLTP. And then I have my normal reverse engineering flow. I'm looking which kind of binary I have. It's a elf binary 64 bit. So I'm going to just check these strings. And as we know, we can use an input file to have all the flags in the case of the binary bomb. And then we have these strings telling us that we work so successful uh, by each phase like phase diffused and so on. And we also have this string telling us that the bomb has blown up and we lost it. It's interesting to see that we also have like some kind of string formats going on here. And of course, if you want to know which version of the binary bomb we are uh, going to solve here, we can always have a look into the strings of the servers that we have here. But let's start with loading your binary into LLTP and checking the main function. As we can see, the main function of the binary bomb is uh, getting an input from the user, like from us, and um, calling the, the phase using that uh, input that we passed to the main function to the phase and every time uh, it returns from the phase uh, function it's going to diffuse and lead us to the next phase that's basically what is happening in the main function so let's have a look into the phase number one and then we can see that the phase number one is pretty simple it's calling a function called strings not equal. We can assume it's a string compare. We don't need to really check it because we are going to solve it with anger. And what it's basically doing, it's taking the input that we had and calling this function. And if the strings are not equal, it's going to jump to the explode bomb function. So if the strings are equal, it's going to um, come here to the stack pointer and then return. That's what we want, right? We want to return to get the phase diffused and go to the second phase. So what we are going to do is first load anger and clarify because we are going to solve all the phases in this uh, document or notebook. And then we load our binary and something that I haven't done before but it's a good way to, uh, good thing to start now is uh, we don't want to hard code all the addresses. So for not doing that, we can use a loader and then it's the main binary. So it's our main object and minimal address is going to be our base address. So this way we don't need to hard code our base address. And then the bomb is going to be our always avoid address. This is in the base address plus the offset 1BE5, as we can see already here in the phase 1. So let's set this because we are going to use it in every phase and start the phase 1. So to start the phase 1, let's disassemble it first. So looking at it, we know that it's doing the string compare probably and and if everything is all right we are going to return so what we want uh, first of all we need the base address of phase one and this is where phase one is called from the main function and as we can see it's 1587 our call so we go to the main function and see where the call to 1587 phase one is in, uh, it has been done and it's in the 14A8 offset. So go back to our code 
and we defined that the phase one is the uh, call is in one for a8 plus the base address and our target uh, what we, we want to reach like our find address as we have been calling before is going to be this line after the the test and the jump so we want that the jump is not taken we want to reach this address so that's what you are going to use here as a target for anger and we are going to have a similar workflow uh, as we had for the most simple exercises until now just uh, creating a state that it's starting with the base address uh, from phase one and then we start a simulation manager with this state and we let anger explore trying to find the target address and avoiding the bomb. What it's interesting to see here is that a simple thing as a string compare that for most of reverse engineers are uh, quite simple as to reverse and understand is one of the functions that it takes most time to calculate for anger because it's going to test all possible inputs. And as we haven't uh, restricted or constrained our input in this way, it kind of uh, takes a long time, but I'm going to cut in the video, so you don't need to wait for it. And we are back. We finally have something. And just going to scroll down. As you can see, it took a little while. Uh, and there you go. Our simulation found one and needed to avoid 129 uh, different paths. So let's get our flag now. We are going to get uh, the memory address where the flag is stored and then we need to evaluate that or concretize that. So for that we have already our no workflow we are going to store the found state and from this found state we are going to get the register rsi as we remember in the binary the input that is going to be used to be called uh, on the strings not equal is rsi since we are in the 64 architecture and what we are going to do is get the, the address that it uh, is stored in that memory. And then we are going to pass it to the solver evaluate and cast it to bytes as we already know how it works. And as we can see, the string that led us to the found path is I am just a renegade Pokemon. So what we are going to do is to store this string into a file because, as we saw before, we can just pass a file with all the flags to the binary. So we are going to store this into the pomflags.txt and then we can test our flag. And as we can see, we use this uh, string for phase 1 and we get phase 1 diffused. I'm going to queue the process because it's expecting now the flag for phase number two and that's in the next video.